Welcome back to the Microlearning Institute. In this tutorial, we're asked to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position of the DOG group as at the 31st of December 20x4. And again, we're told that it is group policy to value non-controlling interest at fair value. In the question, we're given the individual separate statements of financial position of three companies, DOG, CAT, and MOUSE. And we're given the details of their acquisition. So first, let's look at the group structure. So as we're preparing the statement of financial position for the dog group, we need to understand how much the group owns of both cat and mouse. Firstly, in terms of cat, we're told directly that dog acquired 75% of a shareholding in cat, so consequently the non-controlling interest hold the balancing figure. Now, for mouse, it's a little bit more involved because it's cat has acquired an interest in mouse. So cat has acquired as a, an 80% interest in mouse. But of course, as dog has a 75% interest in cat, we can say that the dog group has 75% of the 80% interest in mouse. And of course, 75% of 80% is 60%. And if the dog group have a 60% interest in mouse, then the non-controlling interest must have a balancing figure, 40% interest in, uh, in mouse. So this is the group structure. and These are the percentages that we're going to use to allocate reserves, etc. within the statement of uh, financial position. Firstly, let's look at the goodwill in CAT. So again, we're told that it is group policy to value non-controlling interest at fair value. So our working is going to look at it like this. Firstly, we look at the cost, and we're told that DOG paid $120,000 to acquire its interest in CAT. So we then need to compare that with what share the group acquired in CAT. And of course, we know that the group acquired a 75% share in CAT, whose fair value net assets was valued at acquisition at $140,000. Dollars. Now that $140,000 is made up of ordinary share capital of 100 directly from the statement of financial position of CAT plus we're also told in the question that the retained earnings of CAT were $40,000 on the date of acquisition. So the dog group paid 120 to receive uh, fair value net assets worth 105 so consequently we recognize $15,000 of goodwill in the dog group in relation to cat. Similarly, the non-controlling interest, we're told, is valued at fair value, $38,000 at acquisition. We match this with the 25% share that the non-controlling interest hold in cat of the fair value of the net assets of cat, which is 140, and 25% of 140 is 35. So again, we're recognizing goodwill in the non-controlling interest of cat of $3,000. Next up, we look at the goodwill situation in mouse. Again, we're told that it is group policy to value non-controlling interest at fair value. And again, looking at the cost of the group's share of mouse. Now, as we said, the group's share of mouse is 75%. So even though CAT paid $80,000 to acquire um, mouse, the dog group only paid 75% of that $80,000, which of course is $60,000. And what they got for that is 60%, which is their group share of the fair value of net assets at acquisition, which is 75. And again, similar to last time, that 75 comes from the ordinary share capital of mouse, which is 50, plus the retained earnings of mouse at acquisition, which were 25. So again, we can recognize goodwill of 15 in the group in relation to mouse. We're told also that the non-controlling interest fair value at the date of acquisition was 31. Similarly, we've got to match that with the 40% share that the non-controlling interest have of the fair value of net assets in mouse of 75. So that gives us goodwill in the non-controlling interest of mouse of 1. Next up, we look at how to prepare the consolidated reserves. So the consolidated reserves of DOG are consolidated entirely. And we add to that the group share 
post acquisition in the other two companies. So the group share post acquisition in CAT, firstly the group share in CAT is 75%. The reserves in the individual company of CAT at the date of preparation of the consolidated balance sheet are $60,000. And if we go back, we see that at acquisition, the reserves in CAT stood at $40,000. So the reserves in CAT have grown by $20,000 since acquisition and we, the dog group, are entitled to 75% of that growth. So consequently, 75% of that 20 is $15,000. We must also add the group share post-acquisition in mouse. And again, we know that the group share in mouse is 60%. The updated um, retained earnings in the individual, or individual statement of financial position of mouse at the date of preparation of the consolidated balance sheet are 30 And if we revert back to acquisition, we see that the reserves of mouse at acquisition were 25 so the, the reserves of mouse have grown from 25 to 30 since acquisition and we the group are entitled to our share of that which of course is 60%. So the consolidated reserves uh, at the 31st of the 12th X4 of the dog group totals to $118,000. Next up we can look at the non-controlling interest. And for non-controlling interest, we're interested in looking initially at the fair value of the net assets of CAT at the date of preparation of the consolidated statement of financial position. Those fair value net assets are made up of ordinary share capital, which we can see from the individual statement of financial position of CAT is $100,000, and the reserves of CAT at that date, which is 60. Of course, we must deduct from this fair value of net assets the $80,000 which equates to the shares held in the subsidiary uh, that is mouse. Because, of course, we will later, in the, right, in the extreme right-hand column here, be dealing with the non-controlling interest of mouse. So if we didn't remove the investment in mouse from the books of CAT, we would be double counting the investment of mouse on the consolidated balance sheet. So here we remove the investment in mouse, giving us a fair value net assets of in CAT, excluding any interest in mouse, of $80,000 at the date of preparation of the consolidated balance sheet. Of course, the non-controlling interest uh, hold a 25% interest in uh, the fair value of the net assets of mouse at consolidation, which is 20. And again, of course, we didn't purchase those, um, th th those interests at fair value. We paid a premium. And again, if we look at our original calculations, we see that there are still $3,000 of goodwill sitting out there in non-controlling interest in relation to CAT. So the total non-controlling interest holding in relation to CAT is $23,000. We must do something similar for mouse, and again, the ordinary share capital and reserves of mouse are 50 and 30 respectively, giving us a fair value net assets of 80. Um, also, we can see that the non-controlling interest share of mouse is 40% because we, the group, own 60%. So that gives us 40% of 80, which is 32. And of course, also, when we look at the working for goodwill that we've just completed in relation to the group's acquisition of mouse, we see that we had $1,000 of goodwill recognized in mouse. So the carrying amount of non-controlling interest uh, in the dog group in relation to mouse is 32 plus 1, which of course is 33. So the total value of non-controlling interest is the sum of 23 plus 33, which of course is $56,000. So now we can compile the consolidated statement of financial position. Uh, again, we can see that dog, cat and mouse are all within the group. So again, when we look at goodwill, the total goodwill consolidates. So again, the goodwill in cat and the goodwill in mouse. Total goodwill, group plus non-controlling interest, is added and it appears on the consolidated balance sheet. And this is $34,000. The assets of the three entities are simply totaled because, again, of course, the consolidated statement of financial position reflects what assets the group has control over. The shares in the subsidiary, again, are eliminated on consolidation. So, again, they appear. Those share values of $120,000 and $80,000 appear on the individual accounts, but you'll see that they're not consolidated to the right-hand column. Again, giving us a total asset value of $624,000. On the other side of the balance sheet, 
the ordinary share capital of course is only the ordinary share capital of DOG because this consolidated statement of financial position is being prepared for the shareholders of DOG. We've just calculated from a, a working the retained earnings consolidated at $118,000 and similarly from a later working we've also calculated the carrying amount of non-controlling interest at $56,000. Lastly, the liabilities. Uh, again, we have obligations. We, the dog group, have, have obligations for all of those liabilities. So again, they consolidate in total to $250,000. Totaling uh, total um, share capital and liabilities of $624,000. Thank you very much for watching this short tutorial from the Microlearning Institute.